Hey, welcome to my channel. This is the second video of a series in which I'll be covering the animation library AnimeJS. With keyframes, we can chain multiple changes one after the other during the period specified with the duration property within each keyframe. Keep in mind that if the duration is not set, each keyframe's duration will have a value equal to the total animation's duration divided by the number of keyframes. Each property can have its own set of keyframes, which opens up more room for creativity since the changes can overlap because each property's keyframes have their own duration delays. We can use staggering to create progression effect when it's applied on the delay property. So each part of the list of the elements has a delay less than the one that comes after it. Using the stagger function in this example starts the animation with zero delay for the first element, then adds one second to each element's delay that comes after it. We can set a delay to the animation of the first element through the start property in the configuration object that we pass as a second parameter to the stagger function. We also have the ability to reverse the animation through the direction property. If set to center, the from property analyzes the list of the elements and animates the one that is in its middle first, then animates the rest at the same time. The easing property in this example applies an easing function over the duration of the animation rather than the motion of the elements itself since it's applied on a time-based property. We can use the stagger function to spread the amount of the effect on the elements progressively. AnimeJS provides a very powerful feature when it comes to dealing with grids, so let's first create a grid of 80 divs.
These two lines should be clear for you now. I just created two keyframes in which I'm scaling every square to one tenth of its size during a half of a second. At the second keyframe, I'm scaling back the squares to their original size during one full second. Same for this first part of this line. I'm just setting a staggering delay in initiating it with one fifth of a second. Now this is where magic happens. Grid takes an array with two values. The first one is the number of columns and the second is the number of rows. It's just as simple as that. So that done, the delay will spread all over the 80 squares following the x and y axis creating like a wave effect. As you can see, the animation starts from the first square, then the delay increases each time we are getting far from it. So that being said, we can go a step further. When I set the from property to center, the enemy function will use the grid property to calculate the center of the grid in order to create the same effect, but initiating it from the center instead of the upper left. Now I'm using the stagger function in order to translate the squares gradually. So, same as before, the translation increases from the top left square and spreading over the x and y axis and setting the from property to center will do the same except that the values of the translation increases by getting far from the center of the grid. In here where we can set the axis property in order to create a sort of mirror effect as animation will spread from the center of the grid over the negative and positive directions on the x-axis. The same thing can be done on the y-axis. Then we can combine both to create a ripple effect. Timelines let you synchronize multiple animations together. In addition to that, you will start to notice how useful they are to the organization of your code when the animation gets more and more complex. First things first, we need to create a timeline and initiate it with some common parameters that will be inherited in each part of the timeline. To add an animation to the timeline, we need to use the add function and set the different properties as we usually do within the anime function.
We can define the time of the start of an animation as a second parameter to the add function. It can be relative to the previous animation's end. Or it can be an absolute value which means that it's relative to the start of the whole timeline. As I have already mentioned, we can set the common parameters at the declaration of the timeline, so we don't need to repeat them in each call of the add function. Here's a list of the parameters that can be inherited. You have to keep in mind though that the value of an inherited property will be overlapped by the one that you redefine in the add function. We can control the animation behavior through a variety of functions. For instance, we can pause an animation before its actual end and of course, use another function to continue it from where it's paused. We have also the ability to restart the animation through the restart function. We can also reverse play the animation. And finally, we can create a whole animation player for further more control.
So this is it for this video, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the final part of this series, and see you in the next one.